Hello friends, welcome you all. I hope you all are safe and doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss about billion questions which has been asked in 2020 from polity section. So we will do a analysis and we will show you from where this question has been asked. So if anybody have read simply the basic uh, material like NCRTs or uh, Lakshmikant, he or she can easily do these questions. So let's see if you do a broad analysis. So UPSC has followed the same trend like they followed previously. So they ask 100 questions and you can see that 100 questions are comprises of 2 marks each. So it's a total of 200 marks and if you do any wrong answer, so you will lose 1 by 3 negative marking. Okay, it almost 0.67 marks you lose. So if you do broad analysis of polity section only, then it is comprises of 17 question and from 83 and from other sections. Okay, so from these 17 questions, it totally uh, consist of 34 marks it consists of 34 marks so you can easily gain 34 marks just by doing polity itself so let's start so if you do uh, if you see if you see the first question it is talking about equal power with Lok Sabha so let's see the options see, uh, making cut motion so if you know that Cut motion is only introduced in Lok Sabha, so it is it's uh, so from this it is the power of the Lok Sabha and not the Rajya Sabha. So you can easily remove this option. If you see option C, the removal of the government, you can see that the removal of the government is the the documents for the removal of the government is only in, introduced in the Lok Sabha itself. So it is not the power of the Rajya Sabha. The documents which introduce for the removal of the government in Lok Sabha only are consist of uh, like no confidence motion and all like that. So it is wrong statement. So if we see option A, so the matter of creating new all India services. So it is not the equal power. It is a special power to the Rajya Sabha itself and not to the Lok Sabha. So this option is also wrong. So, Rajya Sabha has equal power with Lok Sabha in context of amending the constitution. So, this option is a correct option. So, if you see the explanation, then this question, sorry, then this question has been asked from NCRTs itself. You can see that approval for constitution amendment. Okay. So, this is a Second option is a B or B option is a correct option. So let's see the next question. So here it's talk about the MP LAT scheme. MP LAT scheme. So it's a member of parliament local area development scheme. Okay. So if we see the options, option A, it's talk about the MP LATS fund must be used to create durable assets like physical infrastructure, health, education, etc okay and if you see the second option it is talking about some portion of funds to the cst and if you see the third option it is talking about the sanction of yearly base which is not carry forward to next year so if you see the fourth question then you can see that he is talking about the district authorities must inspect at least 10 percent of all the works under implementation every year so these are some of the options given and let's see the explanation of this question the article is already published in Hindu on April 2020. You can see the date here. And here is this how you can see that. You can pause the video and see that how this MP lets work. So by this simple reading simple newspapers and all the basic material, you can easily find that the option D is a uh, true option. Okay, so let's move to the other question so if you see third question so which is talking about the which one of the following categories of fundamental rights incorporates protection against 
untouchability as a form of discrimination so if you see the option a b c d you can easily find that it is talking about the untouchability and untouchability is let's see the explanation so in explanation abolition of untouchability and prohibition of of its practices are uh, incorporated in article 17 so article 17 is present under right to equality so there are six fundamental rights so at right to equality are one of them uh, if you concern this question then right to equality is the correct option so right to equality is the correct option so let's move to the other question it is talking about the in india separation of judiciary from the executive is enjoyed by okay let's see the explanation of this question there are there are some options given and let's see the explanation of this question so dpsp directive principle of state policy are talking about article 36 to 51 so in article 50 it is clearly mentioned that to separate the judiciary from the executive in public service of the state so due to this statement due to this explanation we can assume that option b is the correct option so directive principle of state policy we are talking about the separation of judiciary from the executive okay so let's move to the next question so in this question it is talking about uh, some may confuse that this question is a polity question but it is not polity question it is basically a economy question so if many aspirants have a doubt that it is given article 112 113 and article 11 110, 110 so basically this question is not from the polity section it is from the economy section so let's just discuss this question it is a you can say that is a bonus so along with the budget the finance minister also placed other documents before the parliament which includes the macroeconomic framework statement so it says that that uh, finance minister along with the budget also placed a document which includes the microeconomic financial statement so the FOSI documents is represented because this is mandatory by so let's see the explanation of this question so the following documents were supposed to be placed in the parliament along with the budget to ensure transparency and accountability in fiscal operations so macro macroeconomics framework statement fiscal policy strategy statement medium term fiscal policy statement medium term expenditure framework statement these are some of the documents which it which is presented along with the budget and macroeconomic framework statement is mandatory under frbm act 2003 so macroeconomic framework statement presented to parliament as per the frbm act 2003 these are some of the wholly long statement if you don't read this wholly long statement if you just simply read the macroeconomic ncrt of class 12th you can easily see that it is talking about the frbm act 2003 and it is also talking about the macroeconomic framework statement so you can see that ncrt is play an important role in prelims and means itself and especially in prelims upsc asked most of the questions from ncrt's so a student a aspirant should focus on uh, ncrt's rather than any other magazines or other compilations so ncrt's plays an important role many time i have told the aspirants that they should focus on ncrt's also the ncrt's are the basics so if you have completed your basics then you will be able to answer these type of questions so you uh, UPSC would not change their pattern they consistently ask questions from NCRTs so you should one should prepare itself wholeheartedly and should complete their NCRTs first so let's move to the other question 
so you can see that here the option D is the correct option so let's move to the other question question number six a constitutional government by definition is a so it is talking about the constitutional government by definition is a so let's see the explanation of this question so in NCRT this uh, screenshot is taken from NCRT so there are some functions of the constitution and the third function of the constitution is to limit on what a government can impose on its citizens okay so these limits are the fundamental in this state these limits are fundamental in the sense that government may never trespass them from this we can assume that option d is the correct option a constitution government by definition is a limited government <clears throat> okay so let's move to the other question other than the fundamental rights which of the following part of the constitution of india reflect reflects the principle and provisions of the universal declaration of human rights 1948 so this question is a very general question so this so we can say if you uh, know that our preamble our preamble is talking about the basic human rights and what are those basic human rights the dignity the fraternity the uh, right to the justice right okay so these are some of the basic universal declaration uh, these are the some of the basic human rights which have been incorporated in our preamble and director principle of state policy also talking about the basic human rights how they talking about the human basic human rights so you can say that option d is a correct option and uh, you can a UPSC ki official ki nahi aati tab tak yehi maan ke chalo agar kisi ko phir bhi samajh nahi aaya ye then let's move to the other question so in other question is talking about the legal services authority provides free legal services to which of the following citizens types of citizens okay so there are some of the options given one two three four so let's see the explanation of this question so this is the this is the article which has which was uh, published in the hindu on 15th of april and it is somehow talking about the that the prisoners were also the eligible for the those uh, those services okay so let's see the other explanation of this question so it is given that the person eligible for free legal services are women children persons with disabilities member of the scst community industrial women person in custody victim of natural disaster uh, ethnic uh, caste violence industrial disaster so these are some of the options so an other option that a state government is also is all uh, can also notify a person uh, for these uh, legal services okay so option a is a correct option okay. so option a is generalized and uh, are have more chances have more chances to be a correct option so till the upsc don't release its uh, answer key so this option is a correct option so let's uh, so let's move to the other question ninth question so a parliamentary system of government is one in which so there are some of the options given and option b is a correct option why option b is a correct option because parliamentary system of government is one of which let's see the options option d the government is chosen by parliament but cannot be removed no no lok sabha can remove the government a no confidence motion can introduce in lok sabha and lok sabha can uh, remove the government so this option is wrong option if you talk about option c the government is elected by the people and can be removed by the government no people don't remove the government only parliament has the power to remove the government okay in parliament specifically lok sabha has the power to remove the government if you see the option a all political parties in parliament are represented in the government no all parliament all political parties in the parliament are not 
represented in the government but you can say that they can participate in parliamentary committees to work for the government to work under the government but not in the government okay so you can assume you can assume from this that option a is also a wrong option so if option a c d is wrong then option b is a wrong, uh, is a correct option because the government is is responsible to the parliament and can be removed by it yes government is responsible to the parliament parliament the cabinet is accountable to whom cabinet is accountable to lok sabha and in lok sabha there is a you can say that no confidence motion and no confidence motion through no confidence motion parliament can remove the government so through this option b is a correct option so jab tak upsc ki official ki nahi aati yahi maan ke chalo so let's move to the other question 10th question which one of the which uh, which part of the constitution of india declares the ideal of welfare state so you can see that what uh, there are some of the options given so let's see the explanation of this question so in explanation we can clearly see that directive principle of the directive principles are talking about the welfare state because directive principle have some principle which uh, which uh, shows the power to the government to the state to frame such laws to frame such policies in the welfare of the society in the welfare of their citizen so directive principle who showing power to the government we can say that they were talking about the welfare state so option a is a correct option because directive principle are talking about the welfare state so option a is a correct option so let's move to the other question so in this question so let's see the statement the constitution of india define its basic structure in terms of federalism socialism or secularism sorry secularism fundamental rights and democracy okay so let's see the second statement the constitution of india provides for judicial review to safeguard the citizens liberties and to preserve the ideals of on which the constitution is based okay so let's see the explanation of this question so you can say that you can see here that the term judicial review is no way mentioned in the constitution however the fact that india has a written constitution and the supreme court supreme court is a federal court it is a higher authority it is a safeguard of the constitution okay so and the supreme court can strike down a law that goes against fundamental rights implicitly give given gives the supreme court the power of judicial review so from here you can say that option b is a correct option so why option b is a correct option because constitution of india provides judicial review although it is not directly provide the judicial review but somehow they were talking about that judiciary can strike down any law which go against the fundamental rights of an individual or citizen so through this you can say that judicial review is based on the principle which is mentioned in the constitution and judicial review is a part of the is a part of you can say and uh, judicial review is a part of the basic structure of the constitution and it provides for the safeguard of the constitution and also to the citizens liberties so option b is the correct, correct option and why option 1 is not a correct because constitution of india define a basic structure basic structure in terms of you cannot say that it it uh, only define basic structure on this uh, on this uh, federalism secularism fundamental rights and uh, democracy there are many other things also which is talking about the basic structure okay so through this we can assume that option b is a correct option okay so let's move to the other question the thing is final goal of a stateless society gandhi ji was somehow also a socialist okay so through gandhism and marxism gandhi ji the final 
common agreement between Gandhism and Marxism is the final goal of a stateless society. So this question is might be a difficult for those students who were not and who those who were not from a humanities option like political science society and other option uh, and other options which is considerably talking about the thinkers and all that so it might be a difficult question for those aspirants but if you read basic NCRTs of polity you can find that there was some talking there was some places where there was mentioned that Gandhi uh, Gandhism and Marxism so from there you can assume that option A is a correct option okay so let's move to the other question uh, so in this question they were talking about in the constitution of India which one of the which one of the following is the characteristic appropriate for bureaucracy okay so what what is the major role of the bureaucracy what is the character of the bureaucracy an agency for widening the scope of parliamentary democracy no why would bureaucracy talking about the uh, democracy bureaucracy is not parliamentary is not uh, work for the widening of the scope of the parliamentary democracy no it is not that so let's see the option b an agency for strengthening the structure of federalism no it is not a government it is a body of the it is working under the government why would they talking about the federalism okay so it is not talking about the federalism so let's see the option c an agency for facilitating political stability and economic growth why would they talking about the political stability they were many times there in, in our in india government changes and the bureaucracy remains the same after that there was a, some reshuffling but is it is not about the political stability okay and we can say that option d is the correct option because an agency from the for the implementation of public policy what is the main role of the bureaucracy bureaucracy is talking bureaucracy has a character to implement the policies which is framed by the which is framed by our, our parliament so bureaucracy may bureaucracy is a major function or you can say that appropriate character characteristic feature is to implement the public policies okay so option d is a correct option so let's move to the other question the preamble to the constitution of india is a part of the constitution but not legal effect okay so jab tak, uh, you can say that uh, jab tak upsc ki answer ki nahi option d man ke chalo in 15th question with reference to the provision contained in part fifth, part uh, 4 of the constitution of india which of the following statement is our correct option okay so if you see that part 4 of the constitution let's see the explanation of this question so part 4 of the constitution it consists of the directive principle of state policy and directive principle of state policy are not legally enforceable and cannot be compelled to implement them okay so we can say that option d is the correct option because they were, no, they were not enforceable by any court and the principle let down in this part are influenced the making of the of making by the state okay they were all they were also has we we can say that we see previously that they were talking about the welfare state and they show part to the state to frame such laws for the betterment for the uh, for the interest of the citizens and option two and three is a correct option so let's move to the other question so in question question number 16 they were according to the constitution of india a person who is eligible to vote can be made a minister in a state for six months even if he she is not a member of a legislature of the of that state okay so let's see other statement according to the representation of people's act 1951 a person convicted for criminal offense convicted for criminal offense and sentences to imprisonment for five years for five years is permanently disqualified from contesting an election even after his release from prison okay so let's see the explanation of this question 
first let's see the first statement so they were talking about the person a person who is eligible a person who is eligible to vote a person who is eligible to vote can be made a minister a person who is eligible to vote is also a person who is 18 years so you cannot made a 18 year 18 year a person to for uh, to minister because for minister you should have that minimum age of 30 years of age and in case of legislative council and not less than 25 years of age in case of a legislative assembly so this first statement is wrong first statement is totally wrong and if you see second statement according to the representation of people's act 1951 a person convicted of a criminal offense and sentences to imprisonment for five years is permanently disqualified from contesting an election even after his release from prison so here is a case that disqualification of disqualification of a Sikkim chief minister which was which, which was sentences for one or two years you can say that imprisonment election commission has cut short its disqualification okay so there was a case and this article was uh, published in hindu on 29th uh, september 2019 so you due to this you can assume that if a person is convicted and if he sentences for five years then election commission may in future if there is a case that election commission had reduced some uh, you can say that uh, maybe bar some from someone from disqualification or maybe if they or sh uh, if uh, they, they if they allow someone to contest election then here the answer is if if you if you mark option b option b correct then maybe in near future the option is getting wrong so the safe option you can see that the safe option is to correct is option d why option d because it is a safe option so option d is a correct option so let's move to the other question consider the following statement consider the following statement in this question they were talking about the the, pre, the president of india can summon a session of a parliament at such place as he she thinks fit okay so yes it is right the constitution of india provides for three sessions three sessions sessions of the parliament in a year but it is it is not mandatory to conduct all three sessions so let's see what are those three sessions so there are budget budget session monsoon session winter session so there are three sessions so we see that statement one is correct statement two is correct but it's not mandatory to conduct all the three session yes statement two is also correct and there is no minimum number of days that the parliament is required to meet in a year it is also a correct statement but there is no option given that one two three is a correct statement so in this context you should we you should mark those answer which is which has a wider range so which on which option is has a wider range option c has a wider range because it has option one and option three so here maybe upsc uh, maybe you can say that is a googly from the upsc and they were testing us aspirant so wider answer is option c so we can assume that option c is the correct option and jab tak answer ke nahi aati official to yahi maan ke chalo so these are some of the 17 question which was asked in this year and uh, we have discussed all and there is a note chances that all these question which is discussed in this video are getting correct only 1% chances of getting wrong because all these questions we have discussed with you we we research this we do all the analysis and then we were made this video so 
maybe in future there are some one or two questions maybe getting wrong and uh, due to this and those getting wrong chances are only one percent okay so till then enjoy and uh, continue to prepare if you like this video like share if you like this video like share and recommend this video and also do one thing more do subscribe because we will continue to make all these type of videos to help those aspirants who are doing self-study thank you